Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. This week we're taking a look at how to upgrade the Sapperling Swarm starter deck. So first off we'll take a look at the Sapperling Swarm decklist and then we'll play a game with the deck without making any changes to it, so out of the box. And then afterwards I'll show you how I would personally gradually upgrade the deck and then we'll play some games with the upgraded deck as well to get a better feel for it. So first off let's take a look at the Sapperling Swarm decklist. So the Sapperling Swarm deck is a black green deck that has two major themes to it. On the one hand we've got the Sapperling theme and then on the other hand we've got the Sacrifice theme which is cards that make you sacrifice creatures or creatures that get better if you can sacrifice them somehow. So Taking a look at the Sapperling theme, we've got cards like Sapperling Migration making Sapperling tokens, Yavimaya Sappert, Slimefoot's a great example, and then we also have cards like uh, Thunder Shoot Dried, which is the big payoff card for being a Sapperling deck. And then on the other hand, we've got kind of the Sacrifice theme of the deck, which is cards like Costly Plunder making you sacrifice creatures, Doom Center being a nice sacrifice target, Vicious Offering also makes you sacrifice creatures if you want to kick it, uh, we've got cards like uh, Ride of Bells Unlock, which also makes you sacrifice creatures. We've got uh, Whisper, which makes you sacrifice creatures to return one from the graveyard. And uh, finally also Torgar, which makes you sacrifice creatures to play them on the cheap. So one of the problems with the deck is that it's not very focused. On the one hand, you want some sapling synergies, and on the other hand, you want to be sacrificing tokens to make other effects happen. And when upgrading the deck, we'll focus on the sapling aspect of the deck. So we'll introduce more sapling synergies and get rid of some of the cards that make you sacrifice creatures for an effect. And then hopefully we'll get to see that in action as well during the games. All right, so first off, we'll play a game with the deck before making any changes to it, and then we'll return to the deck list and make some gradual upgrades. All right, we're on the play. This hand looks pretty good. We've got our best card in the deck in hand. So it's hard to turn it down. Let's play Doom the Center which is a little bit out of place in this particular draw where we're gonna rely on Tendershoot Ride up against the blue-black and a departed deck hand. All right, so if we target it with the infection, they have to sacrifice it, but then we also won't get our token since the fungal infection will essentially fizzle since the target will be gone and then uh, it gets countered so we don't get uh, the 1-1 one -one token. So I'm not too interested in using it on the deck hand right now, since then I'll just play a Thalad. Exclusion Mage, Bouncing Thalad. Alright. So we could go a Thalad plus keep up Infection, seems fine. Could also attack with the Dissenter Infection, the Mage. Although the deck hand might be a bit bigger problem in the long term. So I think we'll just Thalad plus keep up one black mana for now. And we're probably just going to target the deck hand anyway here. But we'll see what they do here. We might change our mind. Just a deck hand attacking. Yeah, I think we just get rid of it here. I doubt we'll get more value out of the fungal infection. Alright, for now I'm okay attacking with the Thalad. Dreamcaller Siren doesn't tap anything down since they lost their only pirates. So the Siren doesn't do much here. But I guess now we know that uh, we can resolve our Thunder Shoot Ride. So we should probably go for it. Don't know how many counter spells the blue black deck typically runs. Does look like the blue black starter deck. Hoping to dodge a removal spell on the Thunder Shoot. 
scoundrel into border. All right, so far so good. Got the city's blessing. So let's attack with some 3-3 three, three tokens here. Play Omnivore. And Demon Lord Balzenlock. Yeah, that's a good one. 6-6 six, six Flyer. Opponent gets to draw some extra cards. So if that's the opponent's Mythic Rare. They reveal the Charter Course. Alright, so just a one card. Siren gets in. And a Whisper. No great targets here. Could potentially buy back a Tendershoot Ride if it dies. But uh, I think we're just gonna send all the 3 threes here. Including... Thaled Omnivore. And threaten to deal quite a bit of damage. And we can just sacrifice whichever one they block with... Demon Lord Balzenlock. Alright, that way we gain two life with the Omnivore. Put on down to seven. Um, I think I'm still going for a second Omnivore over Whisper here. We're definitely seeing the power of Thundershoot right here more than anything else. Opponent gets in for 9. Yeah, can't block him. Chart of course to draw to. Let's see if they have uh, some sweeper effect here. Just a scoundrel. And a deckhand. So they've got two blockers. Let's say they block both omnivores. I guess three blockers now. So they're still taking lethal, I think. Yeah, we should have just enough. Could have also played our Whisper pre-combat to pump a Thaled Omnivore, but I'm assuming the Thaled Omnivore would have gotten blocked here anyway. Alright, well, that was a close win here. Definitely just all based on our Tendershoot Drive, going the distance and surviving. Um... Had a Whisper stock in hand, which didn't seem all that amazing. So we kind of got to see some of the conflicting elements between the Sapperlings on the one hand and the Sacrifice stuff on the other hand. And we're just going to try and maximize those draws where we have Thundershoot Ride right, and just win the game by giving all our Sapperlings plus two plus two. So let's dive right into it. All right, now that we're back in the deck editor, it's time to upgrade our deck. So first things first, we want to look for all the Sapperling synergy cards. So if we do a quick search for Sapperling, we'll find Spore Crown Thalid, which is a lord for Sapperling and Fungus creatures, giving them plus one plus one. So that's definitely a nice payoff card for the deck. So this is probably one of the first uncommons we want to add to the deck. Then of course, as soon as we've got some rare wild cards, we want to get four copies of Thundershoot Ride. Right? I think it's such an important card in the deck that you should probably wait on upgrading the deck until you've got three rare wild cards to get those additional copies of Thundershoot Ride. Right? Otherwise, the deck's going to be severely underpowered. So once you've got those wild cards, you can add some Thundershoot Rides right to the deck. And then you also want to max out your sapling migration, making more sapling tokens. And then in the meantime, you also want to make some cuts to the deck. So cards like Costly Plunder can easily be cut. Doom the Center, don't really need all that much sacrifice fodder, and it's not being a sapling makes it a lot less synergistic in our deck. Ride of Bells Unlock for now we can still keep, but eventually we'll get rid of it as well. Twilight Prophet the same. Whisper can definitely go. 
Path of Discovery is still a powerful card in combination with a whole bunch of creature tokens, since those all get to explore, so we definitely want to keep it for now. Poison Tip Archer is definitely cuttable, and so is Torgar. So we'll cut some of those. So we are back to around 60 cards, which is where we want to be. So now that we've added Spore Crown Salad and the Tender Shoot Rides, we've got a lot more Sapperling synergies going, which is good. So next up we want to speed up the deck a little bit, which means we want to add some mana acceleration. And especially in the final build of the deck, which is going to be base green with just a bit of black for cards like uh, Slimefoot, we're not going to be reliant on double black cards as much. We can easily support Llanor Elves in the deck. And despite it not being a uh, sapling creature, it's still going to be quite powerful in our deck. So Llanor Elves is still a fine addition here. And then by adding Llanor Elves, we can also go down to 23 lands. Right now we've got 25, which is, I think, too many to begin with. So we'll cut some uh, lands here for now. We'll definitely need to fix up the mana base in a second. But uh, for now we've got some more Llanor Elves. Then, next order of business is adding Song of Freilies, which is also a pretty important card for these very explosive Sapperling decks. So Song of Freilies is an uncommon from Dominaria. It's a saga enchantment, so when it enters the battlefield, creatures we control get the ability to tap to add one mana of any color. And the following turn after our draw step, they get the same ability. So we can use all those tokens we generate to help us ramp out our more expensive cards, like Tender Shoot Ride, for example. And then on the third chapter, we get to put a plus one plus one counter on each creature we control. Our creatures also gain Vigilance, Trample, and Indestructible until end of turn. So we get to make a giant attack and uh, don't have to fear our opponent being able to kill our tokens. So that's just a, a massive boon for the deck, since not only does it give those very explosive starts where we can turn our tokens into mana generators, it also acts as a finisher effect once we get to the third chapter. So this is definitely a card I'm interested in adding to the deck. And then in the meantime we can make some more cuts, so this is where we can cut the additional poison tip archers, especially now that we're gonna provide a way for our creatures to be able to attack without trading off, thanks to the indestructible mode the effect from Poison Tip Archer becomes less important. We also have Tender Shoot Dried and our new Spore Crown Salad giving our Sapperlings plus one plus one. So we're less afraid of our tokens just being one ones and trading off. So we don't need the effect from the Poison Tip Archer as much. Then in the meantime, we also want to be maxing out our copies of Spore Swarm. Just another powerful token generator, making three Sapperling tokens at once. So we want to have as many of those as possible since they also synergize very nicely with our Song of Freilies. An interesting thing to note about Song of Freilies, if you're about to hit the third chapter Song of Freilies, make sure to turn on full control mode, that way you can still respond to the third chapter by making tokens at instant speed, for example with Slimefoot the Stowaway or with Spore Swarm, that way those tokens will still get the plus one plus one counter, they won't be able to attack on that turn, but that's okay, but they will still get the counter for future attacks, which is pretty important. This is probably where we can start cutting our Rite of Bells Unlock, since that would also be cutting a double black card out of the deck, which will make our mana base a lot more consistent. Same with Twilight Prophet, since we don't need to rely on the card draw engine as much, since we're just going to close out the game a lot faster thanks to all the pump effects. And Verdant Force is also a card I'm eventually going to cut, as it is a bit expensive. It does um, become easier to cast thanks to Song of Freilies, since you could potentially have a bunch of tokens in play, play Song of Freilies, those tokens can tap for mana and you can play your A drop a few turns out of schedule, but I think it's still a bit too slow for the deck, especially now that we've added four copies of Tender Shoot Ride, we've got our repeatable source of Sapperling tokens already. Now that we've added all those pump effects for our Sapperlings between Song of Freyly, Spore Crown Thalad and Tender Shoot Ride, we can also cut Thalad Omnivore, since we don't really need this to be able to attack for us anymore, since now all our Sapperling tokens can start attacking. Then in the meantime we also want to add a few more copies of Slimefoot the Stowaway, adding another powerful Mana Sync to the deck, also combines pretty nicely with Song of Freilies. If you've got some excess mana with Song of Freilies, you can put it towards making more Sapperling tokens. And then I do like Yavimaya Sapherd, providing two bodies at once. I'm less a fan of Deathbloom Thalad in the deck, just because Sapherd combines much better with Song of Freilies. So we can eventually cut Deathbloom Thalads as well. 
and then we want to take another look at our mana base so right now we've got 23 lands but uh, we're not all that consistent at casting our land or elves on turn one since we've only got the nine forests and foul orchard and cemetery come into play tapped on turn one so this is the point where we want to upgrade our mana base as well to make those turn one land or elves a lot more consistent so first i would add four copies of overgrown tomb and then i would add the additional copies of woodland cemetery and then we can cut the foul orchards and cut some swamps since we don't have any double black spells in the deck so we can easily get away with fewer swamps and then a nice value land for the deck as well is a single copy of arch of araska so we can cut another forest for an arch which is a rare land which if we have the city's blessing we get to pay five mana tap it and draw a card which is a uh, a pretty powerful mana sync as well, especially against more controlling decks where the games tend to drag out. But definitely not a priority, so this is probably one of the last upgrades you want to make. And then another card I don't mind adding if you've got a spare Mythic Rare Wild card is the Immortal Sun. which not only gives your creatures plus one plus one, it also makes your spells cheaper, it lets you draw an additional card at the beginning of your draw step, and players can't activate abilities of Planeswalkers, and since we're not playing any Planeswalkers ourselves, it's just gonna shut down Planeswalkers from the opponent. So a one-off Immortal Sun, as kind of a curve topper, is gonna be quite nice as well. And now is probably the point where we can get rid of Path of Discovery, since we don't need the grindy effect as much, since we have enough built-in card advantage with cards like Immortal Sun and Arch of Araska. And uh, another card I forgot to mention is Argyll's Bloodfast. So this is another nice card draw engine for the deck versus control strategies. Definitely a card that you might want in the sideboard, but you could even consider it for the main deck to pay two mana, pay two life and draw a card. And we've got a bit of life gain built in as well with cards like Slimefoot. So we can afford to lose a bit of life with cards like Bloodfast. And Fungal Infection is a fine card, but against some decks you're not going to find a whole lot of targets for it. So this is a kind of card that I don't mind moving to the sideboard and maybe only keeping one copy in the main deck. And an additional card draw engine to replace Path of Discovery is Fungal Plots, which is another card that can gain us a bit of life against the more aggressive burn strategies and also draw extra cards. So it works pretty nicely in combination with Argos Bloodfast since you can gain some life with the fungal plots and then put those extra life points towards more cards with the bloodfast as well. So having both out against the control deck is a pretty nice way to get ahead on cards. And then we can probably cut another vicious offering and move additional removal spells to the sideboard as well, since against most creature decks our plan is just to get as much stuff on the board as possible with all our token generators and all the anthem effects we get from Spore Crown Salad and Tender Shoot Ride. So we're not as worried about killing opposing creatures. Every now and then our opponent's gonna have a problematic creature, like a, a Lyra Dawnbringer, for example. So that probably needs to be answered. So that's where the sideboard cards come in as well. If you wanna hatch and have a bit more removal in the main deck, that's totally fine. You can add a few more copies of Vicious Offering, which is still a fine removal spell here, as it can kill legendary creatures, unlike Cast Down. So it can take care of those legendary angels, for example. And uh, minus five, minus five is usually enough to kill most stuff you're worried about. And of course, being able to just sacrifice a sampling token for the kicker is pretty doable in this deck. So I think that covers the entire main deck. So this is the final build of the main deck. So Sapperling Swarm focused on the Sapperling theme of the deck and not as much on the sacrifice element of the deck. Then going over the sideboard, discussing some potential options. I've already mentioned Fungal Infection moving to the sideboard. So this is a nice sideboard card against the more aggressive decks with a lot of one toughness creatures. Then another decent sideboard card is Assassin's Trophy. Just a very versatile card that's both an answer to problematic planeswalkers, enchantments, artifacts or creatures. So this makes for a very good sideboard card as well. Then another card to consider is a second copy of Argos Bloodfast. So if you want more game against control decks, this is a pretty good way to do that. Then another nice one against control strategies is Duress. Being able to take a key sweeper effect out of their hand like a Ritual of Soot or 
maybe against a red deck they've got the fiery cannonade dealing two damage to everything being able to take that out of their hand before making all those tokens can be pretty important too so i don't mind the full four copies of the rest against control strategies then another pretty versatile card is crushing canopy which can both be an answer to enchantments and to creatures with flying so you can bring it in against the mono blue decks but also against the boros angels decks for example and uh, against certain enchantments that can give you headaches as well and another interesting sideboard card is sorcerer spyglass as it gives you an answer to planeswalkers that you can play preemptively and other various activated abilities that you might struggle with but mostly use against planeswalkers like the fairy and then you could also consider having some planeswalkers yourself in the deck for example you could play some of the four or six mana Vraskas. both golgari queen is pretty synergistic with all the tokens you generate and then uh, relic seeker can also win the game by itself and you can ramp into it with Song of Freilies and Lanor Elves but of course if you bring in your Vraskas you'll need to keep in mind that they get shut down by your own Immortal Sun so you might have to uh, maybe remove Immortal Sun or just pay attention to it in the game itself if you decide to keep both in and then other sideboard cards could include some cards dedicated to Graveyard Hate you've got Dead Eye Tracker which can be pretty effective against some Graveyard strategies Although you'll have to keep in mind if you're playing that eye tracker out of the sideboard that the opponent might have some sweeper effects that they've brought in to deal with all the tokens and then the dead eye tracker is just gonna die to those. So maybe instead you want to rely on artifact based graveyard hate like sentinel totem or uh, silent gravestone instead. So those are other alternatives as well. So if I were to build the sideboard probably go with four duress, two fungal infection, two trophies, one or two canopies, then the additional blood fast so that puts us to 11 cards then one or two pieces of graveyard hate puts us to 13 and then uh, i wouldn't mind one or two planeswalkers in the sideboard or a sorcerer spyglass to shut down opposing planeswalkers so that would put us uh, to 15 already and another card you could consider against the more aggressive creature strategies is moment of craving as it can also gain you some life so if you're playing a matchup where you're not often uh, playing vicious offering with kicker and the uh, minus two minus two is enough then there's a good chance that Moment of Craving is also going to be a valuable addition to the deck as you also get to gain some life so it shines against the more aggressive burn strategies out of the sideboard could even main deck it to be honest but I think I like the versatility of Vicious Offering more being able to kill larger things as well alright so I think that's the deck so this is Sapling Swarm version 2 we'll put a nice standard shoot ride in the picture so that's the deck now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does all right we're on the draw and this hand's looking pretty good turn one lanor elves turn two migration turn three F song of freilies usually when you have song of freilies and migration you want to play the migration first that way you get to take advantage of those two tokens for mana right away opponent on the mono green deck with turn two sea leaf champions their opponent with a pretty good draw as well here I guess we can afford to play a tapped overgrown tomb here into sapling migration steel leaf champion can definitely be a problem for our deck since we have a hard time blocking it and a vine mare as well that one is a lot more manageable all right so time to drop song of freilies And then we can uh, play a Spore Swarm here, which I don't mind. Probably better than playing a Spore Crown Salad. But we can play it at instant speed, so not forced to play it right now. And then I think we're gonna wanna chum block the Vine Mare here. Otherwise, we're taking a bit too much damage. Just a branch walker for now. So hoping to dodge a Galta. Brontodon is definitely an issue too, since uh, that can blow up our Song of Freilies before it goes off. Adventurous Impulse. Opponent gets an Allhead Ferox instead of the Brontodon. Alright, so we don't have to deal with the Brontodon now. 
an extra migration. All right, this is good. So now we've got access to four plus five equals nine mana. So what to do with nine mana? Can play a kicked migration plus Spore Crown Salad. Seems good. And then next turn, on the turn that we're going off with Song of Freilis, we also get to drop an Immortal Sun. Plenty of blockers for everything except Steel Leaf Champion. So we're down to five. Nullhide Ferox. Alright, so just enough mana to drop Immortal Sun here. And then we get an attack with everyone for free. Everything's indestructible. So 9 times 4 equals 36 damage that our opponent has to block here. And you can imagine if this Immortal Sun was a Thundershoot Dryant, it would have been even better here. And they don't have enough, and that does it. So a nice explosive start for the deck. Did have to take some beatings from the Steel Leaf Champion, but luckily they weren't able to produce a Galtine time to provide a finishing blow, and we were able to take over the game. All right, we're on the play. This hand's not amazing, but probably keepable. Missing some token generators to go alongside our Lord Effects. So finding a sampling migration or a spore swarm would be ideal. Up against the red deck with turn one G2 Love Runner. All right, let's play a spore crown. At least we've got some insurance against Goblin Chain Warlord with all our plus one plus one effects. A runaway Steamkin. So next turn they're probably gonna try and kill our Spore Crown Talents while pumping the runaway Steamkin. All right, Fungal Plots is not bad against the burn deck and we've got some creatures that are probably gonna end up in our graveyard. So not a bad draw, all things considered. I don't think we're attacking here, even though we could sneak in three points of damage. Against the red deck, we're mostly just going to try and preserve our life total until we can drop a Thundershoot Ride when they're out of removal and take over the game from there. The red matchup can definitely be tricky if they've got a timely Chain Warlord to blow up all our tokens. Rekindling Phoenix can be difficult to answer. I think our better cards include Song of Freilies, just since that gives us those very explosive starts that the opponent might not be able to outrace. So Thalad eats a Lightning Strike. And do they have a Wizard's Lightning or a Shock? They do. Well, this is a beating. So we could have tried to sneak in those three points of damage. Opponent probably would have killed both creatures regardless, but you never know. All right, well, we can Fungal Plots and activate. Probably beats playing a Lander Elves here. Fanatical Firebrand. Pump Steamkin up to a 4-4. So are we already in Chum Block mode on the Steamkin? I don't think so. I think we would rather Chump once we have two tokens available. So we can at least uh, gain some life and draw some cards. So I'll take six. And a Vicious Offering, that's a good pickup. So this turn we can go Lanor Elves, Vicious Offering with Kicker, plus Fungal Plots, Activation. There's definitely a reason to Vicious Offering the Steamkin now, so they don't get to use the 3 mana, but our opponent with only 2 cards in hand. 
and already four lands in play probably doesn't matter too much. Put on target Slanor Elves with Firebrand. All right, I'll pull the trigger now then. So kill Steamkin, sacrifice Slanor Elves. And we've got more food for the fungal plots as well now. All right, so that worked out. And we're just hoping that uh, Tender Shoot Ride is not going to get answered by a removal spell. Don't mind making a token here. And double blocking. And if they try and blow up or double block, we'll just gain some life and draw a card. All right, Wizard's Lining, so now we'll just respond up to 11. Song of Freilies, not great when we're out of stuff in hand, but it might still be useful. Opponent might be flooding out a bit, which is why they gave us the GG earlier. Well, hopefully they've just got a land in hand and no additional burn spell to answer the Tender Shoot Ride, since I think it's time to play him here. Could play it even more conservatively and uh, activate Fungal Plots for an additional turn and use Fungal Infection, but I think we just uh, try and go for the throat here. Play it under shoot and hope it survives. Alright, Chain Warlord, that's fine. Just gonna take two from Lava Runner. All right, and we got to untap with Thunder Shoot, so that's a good sign. Now a Spore Swarm as well. So let Song of Free release it up. And now we can Spore Swarm at instant speed. And we've also got the City's Blessing. Chain Warlord gets in. It's definitely an interesting spot here. Could get blown out if her opponent has a removal spell for Tender Shoot Ride. But then I imagine the Lava Runner would have gotten in there as well. So let's just Spore Swarm and try and double block. Don't think I want to put anything else in front of it. Alright, so first strike happens. Lose one token. And then we get to kill the Chain Whirler. No need to sacrifice anything with Fungal Plots. And we're close to being able to attack for lethal with Song of Freilies here. So don't mind being aggressive. And then we can Fungal Plots plus Fungal Infection to make some more tokens. And we should be safe from burn spells, thanks to the fungal plots as well. That's fine. And yep, yeah, our opponent should be pretty dead here. So we could fungal infection the pyromancer and then attack for more than lethal on the way back. Sweet, well, managed to survive the mono red deck here. Definitely had our cards line up well. So on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. This hand doesn't look great. We're missing some of those powerful cards like Song of Freyly, Sapling Migration, Tender Shoot Ride, and no green mana, so. All right, this is better. Put on Mulligan as well, and there's a slime foot on top. Yeah, don't mind the slime foot here. Gives us a turn for play. Up against what may be a blue-white control deck. 
against the blue-white control decks if they rely on removal in the form of seal away and sell the wreckage. Keep in mind you don't have to attack with Thunder Shoot Ride and Spore Crown Salad. And uh, as long as your powerful creatures don't get tapped, they uh, will have a hard time killing them. Let's dust out the waters with a Sap Herd. Resolves. Um, could decide not to attack with the Spore Crown Salad if we want to play around Seal Away. I think I'll actually pass a turn here. We don't know for sure that our opponent's a control deck, they could just be some other random blue-white deck. But uh, I'll play it safe for now. Ixon's Binding on the Thalad. Well, better Spore Crown Thalad than Thunder Shoot Dried, I guess. Get in for three. Play Slimefoot. And next turn we have the option of making some tokens, or we can play Thundershoot. And against control decks, just activating Slimefoot a bunch of times can also be quite powerful. Opponent does have the Fairy. So hopefully they don't have an Asset Scatter here. They didn't seem to have it when we played our creatures earlier, so there's a good chance Thundershoot will resolve here. They could have drawn it in the meantime, of course. But I think we still tried out. All right, that worked. We're one short of the city's blessing, sadly. But that's okay. So I'm expecting a seal away on Slimefoot here. But I'm okay with it. All right, the fairy died. Now we do have the city's blessing. And we just need to play around Settle the Wreckage, which is a lot easier than uh, other sweeper effects. Take Vengeance, it's a worse version of Seal Away, I guess. And the Karn. Alright, well, if our opponent's tapping out, then we don't need to fear Settle as much. Still gonna keep the Tender Shoot Dried untapped, I think. And yeah, then we can give him a Seal Away. Sampling Migration seems great. Can play this kicked. And then kill Karn. Send two other opponents and not gonna tap or tender should ride here. And then maybe next turn we'll split the difference with our samplings in case they keep up their mana for saddle. Although they haven't represented Zelda Rankage yet this game. And our opponent's just gonna concede. Yep, well, there you go. If you can resolve a Tender Shoot Ride versus a blue white control deck that doesn't have removal that can kill untapped creatures, then uh, that's an easy way to run away with the game. Of course, they could just drop an Ixalan's Binding on it and then we're in trouble. But uh, yeah, that played out pretty nicely. Again, showing the power of Tender Shoot Ride. Alright, so we got to show off the deck against a lot of different archetypes and came away with a lot of victories, so that's a good sign for the deck. Feel free to let me know in the comments which deck we should try and cover next in the series, but for now I want to thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.